we are going to give it a few minutes and let everybody join. And then we will get started. Tonight we are going to talk about uh, ceramics. We are going to do color concentrates on bisque and showing you some brush strokes. I'm also going to throw in there um, some underglaze, opaque underglaze, and I'm also going to show you uh, one of our textural glazes also. So um, I kind of switched things up from just the plate that I posted. So hopefully you'll like what I've got for tonight. All right, so we will let a few people get on. Looks like we got 16, Bert, is that right? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to do your share thing. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. I am Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. And tonight we're going to talk about our um, ceramic products. So we're going to give it just a few more minutes and let a few more people join in, and then we will get started. Um, I've done some switching around with my cameras, so hopefully things uh, will be better tonight. Every week I try to improve things, so um, let me know what you think. Okay. All right. So um, I posted a picture of the little plate that I did, and actually the plate is um, I don't have it fired yet because I'm going to show you some things on it and then I'm going to paint on another piece. I'm going to paint on a little uh, flower pot and these will both be giveaways. So hopefully you like those. Okay. All right. I am going to um, switch to my overhead camera. Okay, so can you hear me now? It may take just a minute to for you guys to be able to hear me. I thought I had all of this worked out, but um, evidently not. <laughs> okay, so hopefully um, somebody tell me if you can... Uh, Hear me okay. now? Okay, we're back. Okay, sorry. I had muted a camera, one of my cameras, so that um, I was I was trying to be proactive, but evidently it didn't work. So, okay. So, uh, Luann, here's the plate again. This is the one that I posted. Okay. Um, and what I was saying is, uh, this is a Petra mold. Okay, has a really great foot. They have different sizes available. In this mold I've done quite a few different samples for them over the years using that and I'm gonna give you this is mold CS 
one six zero. It's an eight inch square plate. Okay. Just in case anybody's interested in that. Okay. So I purposely um, did not do the edge of this one because I wanted to show you how I do the edge. And then I put some strokes on the back also. So this will be one of our giveaways when it's uh, finished. So these are bisque. So for tonight, to show you most of the strokes, this is a cute little um, flower pot. And let me hide this. Um, but that is, it's called Touch of Toll. And I've got it on sale for $8 in case you're interested um, in the pattern pack for this. Okay. So this is a cute little flower pot. Um, I was brave and I've put three little motifs on the inside and then I've got the bird on the outside and two more motifs. Now, what I wanted to show you is, okay. So in the packet, you see the plate finished, but in the last page, this is a vase that I did. Um, actually, I think I did this when I was in Pennsylvania at Renee's shop one time. Um, and on here, I have got what's called our lava stone. It's just a decorative textured. It's kind of like the old sand stars that Duncan used to have years ago. We have uh, quite a few different colors of it. So I was going to just show you how that worked. Also, we haven't really talked about any of our other um, ceramic products. So I thought that would be nice to show you that. So what I've done here is just take my watercolor marker. And remember, I'm using the Statler Tri Plus Fine Liners. This is like a Sharpie point. Okay, it's water based. So it fires away. You can draw directly onto your bisque. Okay, so what I did was I just drew out a curve on both sides. And then that's what I'm going to put the uh, mauve color. So what I've got is Deep Crimson CS632. These are our color strokes. These are made for bisque. They're opaque underglazes. So you can put two coats of any of the color strokes underneath our lava stones. And when the lava stones have like a little crystal in them, let me show you this real quick. So you can, this is our ivory color. So you see it's got like a little opening. So what happens is those little crystals pop in the firing and they open up to allow you to see the bisque underneath, the white bisque. So you can put a different color under there and then, so bring out a color that's in your design. I did not under this one. Um, I was just searching for something so you could see. It is not a food safe surface. It's decorative only, but when you put the color stroke underneath it and then put the lava stone on the top it becomes a watertight surface so if you were going to do like a birdhouse or a planter you know pot um, for outside at least you know it will be water uh, safe okay so it's just you can see they just pop open Let's see if i can get closer so there it's just a clear little crystal that pushes open when it fires okay so I wanted to show you that and I just thought I'd, you know, mix things up just a little bit. So what I did was I went ahead and put one coat on this. So I'm going to show you how to apply that because there may be some of you out there that may not know how to use an opaque underglaze or you're new to our product. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that out. You can use a small soft fan brush. You could also use our large semi brush. And I like to use the Sumi when I'm trying to get up next to that design. So what I'm going to do is show you how to apply this. While this is drying, then we will uh, work on the edge of the plate. And I'll explain how I transferred the design. Okay. Um, yes, we have a question. Ben, yeah, Ben wants to know, does that work for glass? This will not, Den. Uh, currently, no, do not use this. Although I have some things for you coming. So I have to do a few more experiments, <laughs> testing. Okay, so right now, no, I would not put this on there. It does have a touch of clay in it. It has glaze in it. And so therefore, it would not work well uh, with the glass products. So you can see that, that if you have the Sumi set and maybe you don't have the fan brush, you can just... Um, 
take that and use it. Okay. You don't have to have the fan. Just keep long, continuous strokes. You want to um, not see your strokes. Okay. So just the larger the brush, the softer the look, and the less brush strokes you will see. Now, there is a hair there. I think you can see that. See that hair right there? Before I fire this and before I put, well, if I were not going to put any texture over it, texture glaze over it, I would make sure I remove that. It will burn off, but it also will leave a line in the color. And I don't want that. Okay, so I would remove it before you fire for sure. But you can see how smooth that goes on. So the color strokes, um, and I went ahead and I put a second coat on the bottom of this that's already dry so I could set it down, okay? And then I'm going to finish the top off at the very end, and I'll show you how to do that um, after this dries. So rinse your brush, lay it flat to dry, okay? So what I'm doing is just this particular... Uh, lava stone. I'm just putting a dark color underneath it because it's kind of a soft mauve. And when it pops open, when the crystals pop open, then you'll be able to see this dark uh, cranberry type color underneath. Okay. All right. So I'm going to set this aside. And then I want to show you how to do the edge of this plate. So you, I like to use any kind of a little turntable. Okay move that out of the way um then you want to use uh, this is a foam one inch foam brush okay i like this one with the wood handle because this is softer the ones that have a black handle or excuse me a red handle and the black up here it's a little coarser and it tends to pull off what you're putting on so this is the one that i recommend that you use okay so on this particular one i'm going to use deep cranberry 132 cc 132 on the edge now bird am i okay because it looks like i'm stalled on my side no you i'm seeing you fine okay there was some other uh people trying to do lives tonight and they couldn't even get on so i'm like crossing my fingers we don't have any issues okay all right so you can see what i did was just just um, spend some of that color and I'm just getting it worked into my foam brush. Now this is an old one. It has a V shape and I'm going to stay right in the middle of that V and I'm only going to press down on the V shape. I'm not going to let the plate go to this side. Okay. Um, and I can zoom in just a little bit if that helps. Okay, so here we go. So just any kind of a turntable and you just want to press evenly. And when you do that, it will come over the top. And for some reason I am shaking tonight. So if you put the same amount of pressure on there, it will go over the top and go over the bottom so that you get an even line. Okay. Everything still look good, Bert? Any questions so far? Not at the moment. Just okay. Nice comments. So let's see, you got two people from Columbia, Isabel and Oh. Hi Miss Isabel. Thanks for joining me. Miss Isabel is a awesome, awesomely talented lady as far as acrylic work. She does absolutely beautiful. If you don't follow her, you should. Um, she is definitely an inspiration. Um, and I hope I can learn more from her. Okay. All right. So let me, whoops, back up. I moved my camera so everything's backwards to me from what it used to be. Okay, so then you just let this dry and you would add another coat around there. Okay, that's how we finish that one off. So what I did, you have a question? Okay. What I did was I took my pattern and I laid it underneath the tissue paper. 
I'm trying to find my pattern. So you would lay a pattern underneath and then you take just a pencil and trace your pattern on, okay? So which I did. And then you're gonna take and take that over here and you would take that Statler Triplus Fine Liner and I'll just trace one of these on. I'm not going to paint it, but just so you can see it done. So you just go over that pencil line. And when you do, it comes out on the bisque. Okay. Um, this works on greenware also. And it also works on top of drag glaze if you're doing a Majelica technique. You can draw directly on the bisque with these pens and it will fire off. Okay. No problem with that. And you can see this is drying fairly quick. Here's that hair. It's like a dark line. So I'm just going to take my finger and roll that out and it comes right off. And there's another one. So um, I used a large sumi brush and I can tell you that I don't use the large very often. So that's why when a brush is first made, um, there's extra hairs in there when they, when we trim them off. So Sometimes you'll lose a few on your, uh, you'll see it maybe in your paint or on your piece. Okay. Okay. Question from mm -hmm. Lori Shearsman. Do you ever use 24 karat gold on edges? Um, I have done gold, um, not necessarily on an edge, but you can. Now, Lori, I know you work a lot with glassware, um, and there's a different gold for uh, like stemware, okay, that's a lower temperature, if that's what you're wanting to know about. Um, I have done, I've outlined different pieces with gold. Um, I've done all different types of things. Um, and I can get Bert to uh, get a piece and I'll show you that later on, okay, after we get going. So yes, it can be done. It is your last step in your ceramic. So once you get um, the bis firing, the glaze firing, then that would be considered an overglaze. And that would go on last. So the higher the number of cone, I believe 018 is a gold firing. So that is a lower temperature. So your lower temps will be your last. You wouldn't want to put it on with the glaze because it's going to just burn it off. Okay. So hopefully that answered um, your question. And if I can help you more, Lori, you can always message me. Okay. All right. So everybody understand how to transfer a pattern. So no matter where you uh, have your pattern, you just need to put it on the tissue paper and then transfer over. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our little bird and I'm just going to lay this guy up here. So I've got, um, and this is a terrible bottle. Sorry. I use my old bottles. Um, CS607 ivory. Okay, so it's an off-white. Um, again, it's just like the mauve color that I put on there. It's an opaque underglaze. And the reason I'm doing that is because on the little bird, I need something that will help block out some of the brown, okay, versus the white translucent underglaze, which would be the CC, okay? And I guess I can leave him sitting over here. And maybe you can see some of him. I'll turn him there. Okay. So always shake your bottles. Everything is in a gel base. And so they congeal when they haven't been used. So you need to shake and agitate them until you can hear them. Okay. So that is a color stroke. And then I'm going to use uh, Burnt Sienna, CC 186, Burnt Sienna. Your browns and I have to get this one shook up, are thicker, okay? Um, one of the little tricks after you shake, kind of undo the lid to kind of burp it so that it doesn't, when you flip the lid open, it doesn't go poof and get all over the place. Your browns will be a little thicker, okay? So you do need to add a little bit of water. So I'm just going to take the handle of my brush, dip it in my water bowl, and I'm just going to stir that up because it needs to be a little bit thinner. Okay, so the darker the color, it could be thicker in the container. Question, Bert? No. 
Okay. I can't find the you Facebook can't. comments. You can't. It's or the, the oh. YouTube. They'll show on on the B Live. Yes, I know. Okay. I was wanting to see it separately. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll have to go to you. You'd have to go to YouTube. She, he's trying to find separate comments. Okay. So what I'm going to use is a number seven round. This is our Bavarian round, the 500 series. Um, these are ones I talked about a few weeks back when I did strokes. Um, they don't have as much of a pointed end and they're a little easier, uh, for a beginner to do a stroke. And I'll show you here. I'll just put water in there press, pull, and lift, and lift, and lift. Now, the watercolor marker, you can see how that's kind of starting to fade, okay, because it's a water-based marker. When you touch it with any kind of liquid or water, it's going to start dispersing. So sometimes you'll see a halo of whatever color marker you use. Just try to ignore that. It's not going to be there. You're not going to have a blue outline uh, when it's fired, okay? Um, Let's know why yes. would you trace your pattern after you have done any of the glaze? Why would you trace your pattern after you have done any of the glaze? So, Luann, what I was referring to as far as the transfer, you can trace a pattern on bisque, you can trace a pattern on greenware, or you can do it on top of a dried matte glaze so that you can do a myolica or majelica technique. So that would be the reason you would put it on top of a glaze. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, and we'll do a Majelica. Uh, I was trying to see if I had one, and I don't think I do. Okay, so what I'm going to... Sandy wants to know is the name of the pen you are using, Statler Triplex Liner. Triplus Fine Liner. Sandy Statler Triplus Fine Liner. So let me show you um, a box so that it's easier to recognize. Okay. So here they are. So it doesn't matter what color. I just wouldn't use a color that you're... So if you're going to do... Don't use black. Because if you're going to outline with black, it's going to be hard to see that, you know, that you haven't... You're going to think you've got it outlined because you see a black line. That's why I like to use different colors. Okay. These come in smaller packs. Um, this one, um, get on dickblick.com. And Sandy, you have one of those stores in Las Vegas, not too far from you, from the ceramic shop. Um, but anyway, they have smaller, like uh, six, they have nine or 18. These are great. Okay. So just FYI. All right. Okay, so let's do the, the bird. So I'm going to do uh, like I've got over here. Let me pull him in. So I'm going to do his little belly. I'm going to fully load that brown 186 burnt sienna. And I'm working that into my brush. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a couple of strokes with just the overhead camera. And then I'll add the side camera in a bit, okay, so that you can see that too. So I'm working that in, but I'm going to also kind of taper it back to a point, okay, and I'm going to tip very generously into that ivory, and then I'm going to start up here at his little head, press, pull, lift, 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 and off. Okay, so I did not do that fast. I did it nice and slow. So what it does is it streaks whatever goes on the brush last, which was the white or the ivory, comes off the brush first. And so it will streak that through there. Okay. I'm going to rinse that. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to put out a new color. So his little uh, top of his head is 186, tipped into um, raw umber, 187. So it's a darker brown. And I'm going to switch and go to um, a little bit smaller brush. 
this one is a six. Dampen your brush, blot it on the paper towel to remove the excess moisture. And I'm going to fully load in that 186, and I'm going to tip into the 187. It's really hard to see it. And then I'm going to start up here. I'm going to go right over the eye, press, pull, and lift. And I'm going to just touch in right there. Okay. All right. So we also need to do, um, I shouldn't have rinsed that out. His little tail feathers are the same thing. Okay. So he's got three, four, five, six, seven. And I think we have a question. Yes, Bert. Shelly wants to know why you would not use CCs for this project. I am using CCs, Shelly. I'm using CC 187 raw umber. The only one I didn't use was the CS 607 ivory. And I explained the reason I did that was because the ivory is opaque and I needed it to feather through that brown. And the only way to get that to happen is something that's a little more opaque. Okay. So I did use just the CS 607 ivory on his little belly there, but everything else is color concentrates. I like to work with them on greenware uh, more so than on bisque because they absorb better on the greenware but that's just personal preference and it's hard to uh, find uh, anything out there in greenware anymore unless you pour it yourself. So, and I'm going to put out a little bit more of the brown. And remember I said that brown was thicker. So I'm going to add a drop of water and I'm using the handle of my brush so that I don't waste my product in the hairs of the brush. So just make sure you get that mixed up well and then get rid of that. Okay. Did that make, okay, Shelly, she said she missed it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you understood that. Um, but that's a good question. I mean, you could use either or, I mean, the, the color strokes and I used a color stroke here, Shelly, in case you missed that because I wanted it more opaque and I'll explain what I'm going to do later in that area. Okay. All right, so let's do those other tail feathers. We're going to fully load in the burnt sienna. And I'm just kind of shaping that. So when I say fully load, what I mean is you want to shampoo the hairs of that brush. Okay, do not come in and load. Let me grab another one. Don't come in and go like this. Well, you can't see that brown on there. Let me do this one. So that is not a fully load. You've just added color to the tip of that brush. Okay. That is fully load. Okay. So many people do this and you cannot carry that stroke uh, the distance and you will not apply the same amount of product. Okay. Did you have another question? Bert? No. Okay. All right. So we fully loaded in the burnt sienna. We're going to tip in the, uh, 187 raw umber and I'm going to do the, my largest stroke first. I'm going to press down, pull, pull, pull. And looky there. I did not get, cause I sat here and talked and it started to dry on my brush. So I'm going to go back over that stroke. So fully load in the burnt sienna tip in the uh, raw umber. Press, pull, and lift. I'm just going to reload. Remember what I said? What goes on the brush last comes off first. So I know I've got enough of the uh, burnt sienna. So I just added the raw umber. Okay. I'm going to grab the burnt sienna again. And I'm going to go up here and do these. Press, pull, and lift. And I think the overhead probably because of this curved surface may be better for tonight. I take it our sound is good. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just re-tipping. Okay. So that's all of those strokes with that color. So rinse. 
So hopefully this reinforces some brush strokes at the same time of showing you how you can combine uh, to get uh, the stroke work on here. Okay. Now I'm going to set this down because I need to get out some more colors. So for his little um, wing, we're going to load in um, key lime and we're going to tip into maize. So key lime is 160, maize is 121. These are a lot of colors that I don't normally use, so this gives me a chance to use them. Okay. Um, and my hands are going to get extremely dry touching the bisque, so I apologize if they look awful. Okay, so you need to go back to uh, the larger brush. So I'm going to go back to the seven. Okay, I'm going to fully load in the key line. And you need to use the brush that's comfortable for you, okay? You see, that's a pretty hefty brush, and that may be too large for you to use. Just remember, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll play this little game. Does anybody remember what is a brush stroke? It is three different things. What is it a combination of? I did this a couple of weeks ago, and you guys had fun with it. So if you can type in and tell me what is a brush stroke, I'm going to give you a, hmm, let's see, what can we do? Let's do, I just stuck my finger in the brown. Um, let's do a 3600 number two liner, Bert. I'm going to tip into the maze. I'm going to take a little bit of that off of there and I'm going to press, fan it out, Pull, pull, lift, lift, lift. Now, the I'm almost said it. I almost gave it away. Color pressure motion. Renee, you're a teacher of mine. No, it's actually. <laughs> oh, somebody Jean, else say it before. Jean, Jean Bell. Got there first. Jeannie, you got it. Color pressure and motion. So no matter if you have one color or two colors, the color the pressure determined the size of that stroke and the brush size also. And then the motion that I pulled it in that comma stroke. Okay. Renee, I painted one of these. I don't know if you were on here at the beginning. I was showing them the picture. I think I did it. Maybe you have it. Do you remember that vase that I did at your shop? We'll have to get the picture again. Oh, it's over here. Renee, did I leave this at your shop when I painted it? I know I painted it up there. I'm pretty sure I did. I did this one and the Columbine. Tell me if you have that sample, because I don't think I do anymore, which is fine. No big deal. Okay, so um, his little beak, I'm going to use um, a liner brush, and I'm using a um, the 3600 number two. Did you write down, Jean Bell? Yes, okay. dear, I did. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> As oh, soon as I don't ask him, then we'll miss something, okay? So if we ever miss you and, and something happens, be sure and message me, okay? So, Jeannie, I have your um, address oh. because you won one other time. What's Renee it? says it's in my living room. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Lucky you. It's a nice piece. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, so what I did was put a thin coat of the maize, the 121 maize, CC 121, I'll come back and add a second coat. You guys remind me in case I forget um, in a minute. Okay, I'm not going to worry about his top knot. What I'm going to do is go over and do the little buds now. Okay. And we are going to do those with uh, 137. I'm trying to get my pot, so I guess I'll set it down. Uh, 137, tip in 132. Okay, so 137 is bright violet. Now, Den, you were asking about um, whether you could do this on your glass. You know, um, some of this you could, okay? Uh, you just would not, you'd be very thin applications. And then I'm going to put my 132 back over there because that's uh, where I had it before, okay? All right, so I'm going to go down to a number uh, three. 
This is a Bavarian three, any kind of three round. Remember the Bavarians are, they're rounded off. They don't have as much of a point. Um, so you may find if you're new to brush strokes, that might uh, be better for you. So I'm going to put the bright violet on there first. I'm going to fully load it, shampoo that brush, and then kind of shape it on the side so I get a point. And then I'm going to tip generously into the deep cranberry. Okay. And I'm going to start over here on one just because if I mess up, then it's not right in the middle. So press, pull, and lift. Okay, remember that your pattern is a guide. I always paint larger. You can ask Renee. I'm always larger than what I put on there. So I'm just reloading as needed. Press, pull, and lift. And it's okay if I go into that little circle because that is a dot. You see, it's a green dot, and it'll just cover the end. Okay. So I'm going to go back and grab some of the uh, purple, tip into the deep cranberry, and press pull and lift. Okay, I'm going to move over here and do these. So just add it as you need it. Sometimes you can get away with just tipping uh, into that second color without reloading the first color. But if you start seeing more of the burgundy, the deep cranberry, then the purple, then you need to go back and add some purple. Okay, so I'm going to load, and I'm not rinsing the brush. I'm just working it on the side of that paint well. Ooh, I got the Michael shakes tonight. To know after you are done with the project, do you put the product back in the jar? No, I do not put the product back in the jar, Michael. Now, even my own product, unless I, if I dispensed it, and I knew I got too much out to begin with, then I might take my tool and put it back in my container. I never, if I'm teaching, I do not want any of it back because you're going to, like this, I've contaminated that with the burgundy, uh, the deep cranberry color because I keep going back over here without rinsing my brush. Now, it's your product. If it's, you know, going to go back in your bottles, that's up to you. But I wouldn't if you have like I said, double loaded and you're getting into the other one. Okay, so you can see we have another question. Lori wants to know what if you do not cover the trace lines, does the ink come off? Okay, so Lori, yes, um, it is just a watercolor marker. So like on this one here, you can see that my curls, this is the blue marker there, that'll fire away. It's not any of those lines are not a concern. They will fire away as long as you're using the markers that I tell you. Okay. Now there are some people that want to trace with um, the Sharpie X Ultra Fine. Okay. I quit using these directly on bisque. I'll use them on greenware and I will use them on top of the dried glaze. And I tell you all this in my packets. I tell you about transfer all of this. They changed the formula in these probably 15, 18 years ago, and there's more wax in them. Yes, they will burn off, but it can also push your color away from that area. So you'll see a little white line. So the one time you use that and not the watercolor, you might have a problem. Okay. Okay. Since I have, I'm going to let that one dry and I'm going to go over here and reload and do these on the back of here. Michael wants to know, uh, would you cover the palette with plastic or just wash it all away? Um, you know, you could use a wet palette um, like we use in the toll painting, the acrylic world. Um, they do have lids to these, Michael. There's like a clear plastic lid. And what I would do um, if when I was teaching here at my home studio, my students, if they were going to go right home and finish something, then what I do is tell them to take a paper towel. Okay. Did you guys know that these little nibs hold your brush in place so it doesn't roll? Isn't that cool? Um, told them to take a paper towel and a little fine mister and mist that paper towel well. Put it over here and then you could saran it because that's going to give it like some moisture to keep it 
it's not going to stay probably overnight. Um, for glass, we can reconstitute and use them. For ceramics, I don't do that because I don't want, I just don't do it. But, um, you know, and it depends on where you live. And Michael, aren't you in Florida? It's really hot down there. So it would probably dry out. I think we have another question. Yes, Bert. Yes, uh, Susan wants to know what size brush you're using. This is the 500 number three. This is our Bavarian rounds. Okay, the 500 number three. All right, now I'm and gonna, yes. Janet Mutton would says, could you please show us how to clean our brushes and maintain a good point on the sumi? On the sumi. Now the sumi, Janet, Janet's asking about cleaning the brushes and maintaining a point on the sumi. The sumi brushes are not made for brush strokes. Let me clarify that first of all. Okay, do you see those? I put those in the middle there. Okay, so what she's asking, let me get a smaller one, smaller sumi. So this is the small sumi. It's a black squirrel hair. It's not the same as this. This is a sable. It's a Kalinsky sable, highest grade available. This has too much uh, leeway. It's, it's like if you bend it, it almost stays it's too limp. Okay. This, this has your spring. It's going to bounce back into the shape. I, I do not use this for brush strokes. Okay. But, um, I swish mine clean in the water and then, um, you can take and put you some soft soap in your hand. I do not have any back here. Um, and just keep working the brush back and forth until you see the color. If you see color dispersing, then you know, your brush is still dirty. Okay, you can also take a bar of ivory soap and wet your brush and just go back and forth on that soap. It'll lather up and you'll be able to see if there's color coming out. Rinse it and keep doing that until it's clean. And then you can kind of just shape it and lay it flat to dry. Do not stand it up in your little containers, okay, because the water is going to run down, loosen the glue. It also, if it's a wood handle, it will um, swell the, the wood. It will cause, over time, the lacquer that's on the outside of the handles, the paint that's on there, it will cause it to peel and crack and fall off. Your ferrule will get um, loose where it's crimped. Everything just, uh, it just doesn't work well. Okay, so hopefully, Janet, that uh, helps. Okay, Lori is saying... Me too. Got distracted. Paula keeps per prompting me. Um, had, there was another question. Okay. Do you do any shows like the one in Waukegan, Wisconsin, this August? Um, from Bridget Manley. Hi, Bridget. Um, I am not. I have not ever done that show. Um, Miss Helen used to do that show for me, and mm -hmm. uh, she recently passed away. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so no, I don't, but hopefully I can do some webinars so that you can get some more, uh, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. um, if you want a private zoom, I'm more than happy to do that also. Okay. Um, the only show that I have booked is, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, which is October one and two. And the reason I'm doing that show is because I judge that show and it right now it has one of the largest ceramic competitions. Um, I do take my glass and my ceramic paint uh, with me to that show. It's a very small show, but they have anywhere from 300. We've had as many as 425 entries uh, in that show. So anyway, okay. And I'll put the information up on the website uh, with the address of where I'll be there. And I usually try to do some make and takes uh, in the show booth also. Okay. All right. Janet says that helped. Okay. So let's move on. Um, we need to do our leaves next. And I did those. So some of the leaves, I've got uh, two greens and then I've got green and the aqua splash on the others. Um, does it matter where you put them? Not really. Uh, but if I'm going to try to follow my pattern so that um, somebody didn't catch. <laughs> okay. So let me shake these colors and get them 
key lime and laurel, and then we need aqua splash. So this is question. This is aqua splash. This is LE003. Can you tell I use my bottles a lot? I've rubbed all the letters off. Um, LE, just in case you haven't been on one of the ceramic lives, LE means limited edition. We originally had three colors. We only have the one left now. And the reason we made them limited is because um, we, the materials that they were made with, uh, we were afraid we wouldn't be able to obtain them for any length of time, which we weren't. And so the pink and the purple that had gold in it, it's just too expensive to make them. Um, I'm also doing CC162 Laurel Green. And just so you notice, this is our one ounce bottle. This is our two ounce bottle. And then we have pints also available. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go to a square shader. And I'm trying to, uh, six, I believe, is what I've got in the paperwork. You can do a six or eight. This is a little bit larger pot. So I'm going to use the eight Kalinsky 5200 size eight. Remember to always dampen your brush in the water. It's like wetting your hair when you're getting ready to shampoo your hair in the shower. Okay. You wet it, blot out the moisture, and then we're going to fully load in the key lime. And I'm going to corner load in the 162 Laurel. I always keep the writing of the brush towards me. I'm going over basic stuff, guys, because the more times you hear this, hopefully it will sink in. Okay. And I'm going to corner load with that green, Laurel Green 162. And I'm going to blend it quickly. You don't go one, two, three you got to do it quickly. Most of the time I will load twice the first time I start this. And that just helps push the color across so you'll get a gradual blend. Okay, so um, let me turn this around. And I'm going to turn this one so you can kind of, whoops, see it also. I just scratched my pot. Okay. So we're going to do these three leaves. And I like to keep the dark next to the stem. So the dark is down towards the tail. Press, pull, and slide off the chisel edge. Now my question is, do you want to see a side camera on this? Somebody tell me yay or nay. Or do you think this is okay on the top? Just the overhead. Okay, and we're going to go up here and do this one. Press, pull, and lift. This is a wedge stroke. And I had a piece of paper out here to show you. And now I've lost it. Okay, moving on. I think I've got enough, but what I'm going to do is just go load in my palette to pick up what's there. Press, pull, and slide off. So I'm not turning, okay, I'm not turning or what we call hooking the brush, okay. Let me grab a piece of paper because some of you may not have been on the brush stroke class. This seems to be the fun part, Lewis. Do you do a glaze at the end or am I getting ahead of myself? <laughs> well, we, <laughs> you will do a glaze at the end, correct. Um, this is a manufactured um, piece of bisque, so I did not, and the reason I'm saying this is I did not pre-fire this so that I made sure it was an 04, so I'm actually going to take this to a greenware firing, an 04, so that I make sure that bisque is mature and it doesn't craze on me, uh, but that's a good question. Normally, if it's something I have poured or I have poured for myself, I bisque it myself, I know it went to an 04, then I will go ahead and just clear glaze right over it and fire to an 06. But these are either soft fired or, like I said, a manufactured. Okay, so when you're doing the wedge stroke, and let me zoom in. The preponderance of, of comments say the overhead view is fine. 
overhead is fine. Okay. All right. So imagine that you have a V shape there. Okay. And this is where your stem is. So dark next to the stem, you're going to press down to determine the size, brush stroke, color, pressure, and motion. Color, pressure, and motion. I'm a robot. <laughs> the more times, like I said, that I say it, hopefully you'll uh, remember it. So you've got your V, there's your stem, and I'll try to move my hand. Normally, I like to hold right there where the ferrule, ferrule attaches to the handle, okay? Um, I did upload the brush stroke live. Um, I forgot that I wasn't recording on that one, and it's out there now, and I give you a picture of a brush, tell you the parts of it. Um, go watch that again. There's a lot of good information. I, I forgot how much I told you guys on that one. And we had fun with the uh, color pressure and motion yeah. thing. Yes. Talisa Keelong, why did you fire to 022 the other day first? Um, I did not fire to 022. We were talking about gla or, or gold firing earlier tonight. Um, I'm not sure, Talisa. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. I apologize if I'm not. Um, 010 is what I did on one. Of, this is like an 010. So you have the green where you clean it. And sometimes I will fire to 010 because it makes it harder. And if I'm traveling with the wear, like I did retreats for many, many years, 13 years. Um, and the 010 would make it harder. It turned it white. Uh, my elderly students were not as apt to break it like they would greenware. So an O10 is a soft fire. Okay. It's, maybe that's what you're talking about. If it's not, um, let me know. Another question? No, I said just shoot another question. Okay. So I'm going to back off on the handle so you can see the, the actual brush. So I'm going to press, fan it out to determine the size, pull towards me and come up on the chisel edge and slide off. And I stood there and talked and my brush got a little <laughs> dry. Okay, so press, pull and lift. Press, pull and lift. Press, pull and lift. Yeah, I'm running out of color. Okay, she said yes, that's the right pronunciation. Uh, it was on the tile. It was on the tile. So, Which tile? What I just did, I loaded in the wrong colors. So I got to rinse my brush. It was on the tile. She said, thank you. She must have got. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hope that helped. Sorry about that. Um, we get so many things going on that sometimes it's hard to remember uh, what we were talking about. Remember writing the brush towards you, corner load, and then blend on your palette. And if you keep blending in that same spot, you just end up picking up press, pull, and lift, press, pull, and lift. Okay. And then you can, I'm going to use the liner brush, but you can pull in your stems if you want. Okay. All right. So let's go back uh, to this guy here. And we'll do him. All right. So I had um, the two apart as my green ones. The other one is the aqua color. Okay, so press, pull, and lift. Turn. I'm always pulling my strokes towards me 99% of the time. Okay, and the reason for that is, is because you have to stop when you get to your trunk or your stomach. Um, if you're pushing, you can go on forever. Okay, now as a teacher, you should know how to paint with both hands. And don't ask me to do that because I'm out of practice left-handed. But when you're showing a left-handed person, um, like right now, if I were doing it, I could go out the other direction. But when you're first learning, you should definitely pull towards yourself. Okay. All right. So and I'm just looking at my design here. Because somebody will catch me and say, you put that on the wrong one. Press, pull, and lift. See that? I'm just going to grab what's on my palette. Dark towards the stem. 
press, pull, and lift. And I'm going slow. I'm not doing these fast. Okay. You, oh, I did it again. Darn it. What are, are you laughing at me or somebody else laughing at me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Somebody tell me what's going on. Press, pull, and lift. You're amazing. Instructing, carrying on a conversation, and remembering past questions. I can tell you're young. <laughs> young? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what is young. What age is young, Pamela? <laughs> I can tell you I have a 33 year old, or 34 now, right? Mm -hmm. 34 and 30 year old boys. <laughs> so press, pull, and lift. Okay. And let's see, doing these. Don't let me forget. And of course, you know, I put that on the inside. I'm going to end up sticking my finger in it more than likely. I'm constantly turning my piece. You cannot just set your piece down and not move it. You have to move your piece. And if you send me pictures of something and you say, you know what, I'm struggling, I'm having problems, send me the picture. I'm going to be able to tell you just like I would if you were in my class, what you did wrong. And you'll be amazed. And there's like, oh, yeah, that is what I did. Now I'm going to try to not get it all over myself since I decided I needed to have this design on the inside. I'm trying to see where you guys can see. Press, pull, and lift. And I am going to go backwards and press away from myself on this one. Okay. Somebody's going to win this pretty little pot. I have not ever painted this shape before. I had it in my storage to do at a retreat. And uh, the place that I do retreats, of course, COVID hit. And then my lady, whoops, uh, decided she was going to retire. And so now I have to find a new location. I used to have uh, years ago, 13 years ago, um, when I first started doing the retreats, I had the same pieces. Six times a year, I taught the same exact class and we were full. For probably three years, we did that. Yeah, it was like a bed and breakfast. So we all slept there. We painted till we fainted, let me tell you. It was usually uh, midnight before they'd let me go to bed, if not one o'clock. And then we were back at it at nine, eight, at breakfast at eight and painting by nine. Okay, so you see all those nice little tails. Remember when you're doing those strokes, okay, you want to make sure, what did I just do with my paper? That, um, remember my little thing is the uh, airplane does not go to the end of the runway and stand straight up. So when you're coming off of your piece, you want, I'm going to back up so you can see, press, pull, lift, 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 chisel. Because if you go like that and really fast, you're not going to get a nice stroke. Okay. Even I, you watch me do all those leaves. I stop. I think about it. I talk to myself, not just to you, so that I get that nice tail. Okay. So keep that in mind as you're working. All right. So I need to rinse my brush and we're going to do the next color. Any questions, Bert? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. So the next color. Over who's going to win? <laughs> paint till you faint. Yes, Miss Lucy Matt. Hi there. How are you? Um, yeah, paint till you faint. I was painting at 11 o'clock last night. Actually, I think I posted this at 10 o'clock and I just kept doing some other things. Okay, so we're going to load with, and this has been setting out. So I'm going to touch my brush to some water and I'm just going to loosen up one side. Again, this is a Kalinsky square shader that I'm using. It is a number eight, 5200 number eight on our website, coloresforearth.com. I'm going to shape that a little bit, and then I'm also going to, we're going to corner in the um, 62, and I am out of space on my palette, so uh, we have a question. Did you want to know what is the smallest size brush for doing these leaves, for doing tiny leaves? Uh, 
Hold on. I stuck my finger in the grain. Even I can make a mess. I usually am wearing it. What is the smallest size brush to do? The, I mean, size two is the smallest that I have. Um, to my knowledge, I don't know that there's any smaller than that as far as a square shader, if that's what you're asking me. Um, we have Call a Brush Company. That's one of the, I bought that company, what would we say, Bert, seven, eight years ago? I think it is. Um, fully load in the Aqua Splash corner in the 162 Laurel and blend. Remember I said a lot of times I will load twice when I first load that brush to make sure that I have it well blended and well loaded. Okay. Dark down towards the stem, press, pull, and lift. I'm going to just reload with what I have here. And I'm always loading the um, corner. If you have writing of the brushes towards you and you go down, that's always my dark side. Now I'm flipping the brush over so that the dark is next to the stem and come off. See, nice and slow, nice and slow. Don't be afraid to take your time, okay? There is no prize for finishing first, Lori. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> no prize for finishing first. Or Miss Renee, if she's still out there. All right, so I'm reloading because I did two strokes there. Dark towards the stem, press, pull, and lift. Hopefully this close-up is helping you. Oh, Lordy, I did it again. I'm talking too much and not... Paying attention. All right. Flip it over. Dark towards the stem. We got a question. Um, I don't know, I can't find it. Do you sell these paint palettes? I do not. You can find them at any local craft store. Um, if you're going to order those uh, markers from Dick Blick, uh, they have the... Uh, palettes. It's called a bubble palette, or at least that's what I call it. Um, and like I said, they have some with lids on them. I know you can find them at Michael's Hobby Lobby, any of those. Uh, what's the other ones in the other parts of the country? Myers, is that it? Oh, AC Moore, that was one of them. I don't know if they still exist on the East Coast or not. I know Renee used to have some of those. Okay, reload. I'm just using what's on the palette. Press, pull, and lift, and slide off that chisel edge. Do you see that chisel edge? With a good brush, you'll get a chisel edge. Okay? In other words, what you pay for, you get. Okay? It's like shoes. I, I say this every time. Shoes, getting your hair done, whatever. You get what you pay for. If you buy cheap Walmart brushes, you're not going to probably do really good brush strokes. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to try not to stick my finger in the, some of them on the outside. Okay. Press, pull, and lift. Do we have any questions? Nope. Okay. Do you guys know that we hit our high here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area at probably 8 o'clock this morning? 56 for the high. We have a freeze warning for tonight. I think Robin had said Atlanta is supposed to have a freeze warning sometimes this week. It's crazy. My mother in Kansas City, Missouri had snow this morning. My dad that lives down in southern Missouri had snow all day until 2 o'clock. Crazy. He's down by Joplin, Missouri. Okay. Aren't those cool in there? Wasn't that fun? I'm going to have to paint one of these for myself. This is really cool. But I thought you guys would like that to see something different instead of just a plate, a flat thing. Um, because we do so much of that, or I do so much of that. It's just easy uh, to work on. So I thought it would be fun to show you something different. Any questions? Janet says she got snow. How much snow did you guys get there in Denver, Janet? I know somebody posted some pictures. Oh, and one of the other things I'm going to give away tonight is this little glass soap dish. These are hydrangeas that are painted with our designers. 
our DZ series. I'm also going to give away watercolor poppy DVD. Um, this shows silk screening and I actually demonstrated this poppy part of it on one of the lives, but this has got video and uh, PDF file on there. So somebody's going to win that tonight. So those are, um, is that three? That made more than three. I think we're at four. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my, oh, I know what I need to do first without sticking my finger in it. Um, have any of you done a, it's called a chisel, um, chisel press, press, excuse me, chisel press. <laughs> um, it's where you're doing something up on the chisel edge. So with this same number eight, uh, this is what I did around can you see around his little tail? Let me flip this one over. See that little fan around his tail? So we're going to load in a color. We're going to tip one corner in a dark and one corner in a purple. And then I'm going to show you how to do that. So I need to get out some purple sage. You okay over there? <laughs> He's moaning and groaning, you guys. Everybody's got snow. Everybody's got snow. Okay. All right. So I'm going to load um, in the key line. So I'm fully loading that brush. And then I'm going to corner in the laurel. And then I'm going to go corner. Whoops. I got a little bit into a purple. Did okay. Wants to know, isn't there a stamp for the poppy? Uh, no, we don't. There's a silk screen. But I think we're out of them, Den. Um, a stamp for the poppy. Uh, I don't have a I have a doodle stamp, but I don't have a poppy one. And I'm working on the silk screen thing, guys. I'm going to try to be able to do a few of them myself. Um, okay, so what I did was just blend this to get it to a nice chisel edge. I'm going to keep the dark down towards the tail feather and all you're doing is putting a little bit of pressure and it fans out. I'm going to add the purple back on there. I lost a little bit of that and I'm going to go over here and do this one. Hopefully you can see it if I tilt this to the side. So you're just touching just enough that it gives it a little fan. It's just something fun and different. I haven't seen anybody do this in a long time. Um, this is actually a design that I did back in 2009. But so many of you are new uh, to our products or new to me. And you may not realize there is over 300 pattern technique packets out there on the website. Whether you do glass or ceramic, you could still use the pattern for any of those. So isn't that fun? We're going to put a white dot at the end of those after that dries, but it's kind of a fun little trick. Um, you could do all kinds of things with that. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to um, pull in my stems. So I'm going to go to the 3600 number two. Okay, Kalinsky liner. I'm whoops, sorry. Um, I like the Kalinsky for my fired product. The Sable Kalinsky is my choice, preferred choice, I should say. All right, so what I want to do is thin down some of the green. So I'm just going to mix some of that together, add a little bit of water to get it more of an inky consistency. Pull your brush through it so that you get a nice point, okay? So basically you've loaded this. This is a well and it's gonna funnel down onto your piece. Um, just out of curiosity, guys, I changed where um, my mic is. It's with one of my, it's with my side camera. So it's like sitting right on my left side. So I'm hoping that the volume is good if someone to just let me know if it's okay is it too loud um let me know what you think about that okay so pull in your stem and center vein a 
load and you need a stem to your buds these little single strokes okay and then when you do your curls always start from where something grows from okay don't start out here and go back you want to start from where it grows from think of it growing out of the ground you start from where it grows from and you'll have a better stroke if you do that now see i didn't follow my line it was just a guide i went bigger don't freak out this one i'm going to do in brown okay good good volume is good thank you i am shaken tonight so i pulled in my veins and my stem at the same time okay and then i wanted to do my stems to my buds so this pattern is available on the website okay and i'm going to stick that up if you're on youtube it will pop in uh there is the picture it's on sale for eight dollars versus 12.50 it's called touch of toll so you can click on that link if you're on youtube watching this we are broadcasting to facebook and youtube at the same time okay all right what does ginger i would never put dirt in that beautiful pot oh come on well you could always just set another planter inside of it i guess you know if you didn't want to actually do it okay so see how quickly that goes on now i'm going to pull in my stems first and that one's going to be brown i got paint all over my nail oh well like I said, I usually wear it before it's over. Okay, so do you like this project? Do you like seeing more brush strokes? Hopefully you do. I thought since we'd talked about them recently that maybe it would be a good idea to, to show more. Um, just because. Okay, so this one, I'm not sure what I... It doesn't matter. Let's do one more. I'll do the other one brown. And that one brown. Okay. And occasionally, and I've got a lot of lights on, so this is drying out. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water to that. If it starts diluting where you can't see your color, then you may need to um, add more color as you're diluting. Okay. Anybody got any questions? No, but there's a lot of them that like to see more brush strokes. More brush strokes? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many more? No, I'm just kidding. Um, like class. Actually, there's, and I thought I had a picture of it back here, and I cannot find it. Um, there's another one doing a calla lily. I actually uh, took a picture of some that I grew one year. I have a black thumb. I told you that one other time, but I actually had some of these. And see what happens when you start leaning on the corners, on the edges? So I'll have to touch that up. I'm not afraid to show you my mistakes. That's how you learn. And you learn how to fix it. Now, I am going to have to go backwards with this because of where that is inside. And that's a, definitely a challenge. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you put it on the inside of something until you've, you know, done your strokes and practice. And if some of you are on that are from the ceramic community and you haven't heard yet, um, sad news is that Miss Arlene Smith passed away yesterday. One of our great ceramic teachers. Uh, she was a Duncan ambassador fighting cancer. So please pray for her family. I found this out really late last night. Okay. All right. So just go keep working around. Load as you need. Don't stick your finger in it. 
and I know I'm over the top of that, but that's the only way I can get inside here. Sorry, guys. But you can kind of see. Isn't that cute? I'm going to back off just a little bit on the camera. So you can see a little bit more now that I'm almost done with that. Okay, now we need, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to do the little top knot on his head. Um, this is um, one of my favorite artists out there, Maureen McNaughton. This is off of uh, takeoff of some of the things that she does. She's um, out of Canada, and I don't know if she's still around or not. Okay, so just that just comes off of the head. And what was I supposed to do? I was supposed to add a second coat of the maze to the beak. So let's do that while we're here. Okay. And then I'm going to use um, the handle of the brush and I'm going to dot in um, the eye with the ivory. And when you're doing dots, if you load and touch down, you will get the same size dot. If you continually dot, you get different sizes. And I know that's a little hard to see, but I think you can see the, the size of them. I can do that in a different color in just a second. Okay, so. And if the handle is not big enough, you can kind of kind of circle it to make the size you want, or you switch to a different size handle. So there's a lot of different sizes out there. I don't know if you can see that against my, see how there's different ones. So think about that. Um, we also have, you know, those dotting tools that you can make dots with, but they're not that big, okay? Um, now we wanna do the brown, and I'm just gonna take and thin down one corner one side of my brown. This is the burnt sienna. There's no reason to thin that whole puddle, okay, because it's going to evaporate and it's going to dry. So just thin one corner, kind of like I was just thin in a small area there, okay. Get that out of the way before I stick my piece in it. So see, I didn't, I didn't even follow my line. I'm just Sometimes you got to do whatever your brush. Oops, I forgot a green line there. See that? I'm surprised that nobody told me. Don't let me forget to go back and put that in. Oh, <laughs> uh, says, don't forget the bird's beak. Again, Thank you. He told us to remind. Me. I did. I just put that second <laughs> coat on there. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to give away a brush, but what is a brush stroke? I'm going to drill this into your brain. What three things make a brush stroke? What three things make a brush stroke? Oh, this is going to be tough to do. Okay, guys, I may not be able to show you. Hey, I did it. Okay, now I need to go back without putting my finger in it and do that green real quick. Over here, I forgot to do the stem to that. Did I miss anything else? I don't think so. Okay, so now we need um, a dot of green, which is the darker green. And the dark is a thicker color, so I'm going to add a drop of water on my handle there and mix that up. Are they sticking with me? Do we still have? Oh, yeah, ah, cool. All right. So I'm going to just. 15 of them answered your question. 15 of them answered? Did they get it right? Like the, yes. Color, motion, and pressure. Color, pressure, motion. All right. You guys are getting. See if I do that, you'll remember it, and hopefully that'll stick with you. So I'm going to load. I went to a larger handle, and I'm just going to put a dot at the end of those buds. So that kind of mimics a uh, calyx. And now I really have to make sure that I don't stick my finger in it. Um, I need to put a purple one on his little top knot also. And all these instructions are written out step by step. Um, I tell you what brushes to use. I put colored photographs in there so that um, 
you have something to look at, okay? Everything is there. Anybody that's ever bought any of my patterns can tell you. Um, I do it as if you don't know anything about our product because you may only buy one technique sheet from me and I wanna make sure you have that information, okay? What did I forget to do back here? All right, let's finish this guy up so it can go in the kiln at the same time if you don't get bored with me doing this. Grab a little bit more, thin that down. This is, again is the 3600 number two and we want to pull in our stems and then do the curl stem to the bud okay sometimes it's hard to talk and paint at the same time so sorry if i get quiet every now and then it uh Let's see, I actually have some colors for Earth. Are these one coat only for painting? Diane Moriel. Diane, um, this is a translucent underglade, okay? A one stroke is what we call them in the fired community. Um, if you're doing one strokes like I'm doing, then it's one coat. Can you put more than one coat? Absolutely. It's kind of like the edge, I can go back. Um, it's not recommended for opaque coverage, although black will cover in like two coats. And uh, then we have our color strokes, which are in the bullet shape bottles, the CSs, color strokes. And these are your made for bisque underglazes in a squeeze bottle is what those are. So if you're looking for opaque coverage and then you want to come back a lot of, on the yellow rose that I did um, a month or two ago, it's out on YouTube and I put a white base down and then did my strokes on top. And the reason I do that usually is because um, it gives me an insurance code, I call it. And if something happens and I need to wipe something off quickly that I messed up, then at least it's not absorbing. These are the hence the name color concentrates. OK, concentrated color. So when you put it on the bisque, it absorbs in there. It stains the bisque. Think of it that way. So um, it's harder to get off. Now, can you get it off? Uh, black, navy, sapphire blue? Mm, not really. So uh, keep that in mind, OK? So for what I'm doing tonight, it is a, uh, a one-stroke method. We have another question, I think. Well, I'm, I'm not sure she's saying what she means, but Bridget Mantee wants to know, is this compatible to easy strokes? I think she means comparable. But... Comparable to easy strokes? Um, yes, Bridget, this would be like an easy stroke. Um, ours does not have any clay in it. It's highly pigmented. Um, but yes, it would be like an easy stroke type thing. Uh, we have 41 colors available. Um, I want my dot maker. Hold on. I got to find my other one. And I'm going to put some black out and I'm going to put it on this other palette. So yes, it is a, a one stroke type product. And since Duncan was bought by Mako and they're not uh, making all of the easy strokes, um, you're more than welcome to buy the 41 colors that we have. Uh, we have no plans to get rid of. We've only discontinued two uh, since I bought the company in 2006 and because they were those limited edition that I talked about earlier. So, um, Lori wants to know where you would sign your plate, if at all. Uh, yes, I will. Um, I did sign this one. I hide it, Lori. That Lori from Canada? Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I usually try to, I usually do it in a large leaf or somewhere kind of, you didn't even notice it there. Or I will definitely, uh, sometimes I'll sign it in the back. That's the other thing that I do. As long as it's on there. Now, have I forgotten? Absolutely. Okay. We are ready. If I don't 
touch it. We're going to look at this picture and we're going to outline. I A while back, I mentioned something about um, a lot of times I will not outline the whole thing, the whole leaf. Okay. And the reason for that is sometimes you want it nice and soft and airy. And let me, whoops, zoom back in. Hold on. Okay. So you can kind of see that I've got one side of the leaves, one side of the buds, and I do the center vein. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, once again, and I should have put this black out here where I could get to it. Then that down, pull that brush through it, load it, fully load. Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm off camera. Okay, so then it down. And once again, I've got the 3600 number two. I got to remember what's what. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start on leaves. So I'm going to accent one side. And I usually, since you've got a dark side of the leaf, I'm going to accent the light side because the dark is already there. And just a little halfway around on the bud. This is hard to hold and do the stroke at the same time. Another question? Okay. So, so I just give it a little wave. And I like, I always have a tendency to make a curl. If you've seen anything I've done, um, that's how I, everybody has a style. I'm going to grab a little bit more water. Uh, Diane, I tuned in late for these pieces base coated with a solid glaze before the detail work was applied. No, this is on bisque, uh, Diane, and this is using the color concentrates. Okay. So, no. And then I'm going to, because this is purchased bisque, and I'm not sure that it's fired uh, properly, a lot of times they're not, I'm going to take these back to an 04, which is a bisque firing, and then... I will come back and put glaze on it. Uh, I'll put glaze on the plate and the glaze will only be on the white areas of this and the inside. And I'll show you why in a minute, because I'm going to show you how I put on that textural glaze. Okay. So just kind of loose, but you see how it kind of gives it some character. Doesn't have to be perfect. I did do these. The more says you have to outline. Nope, you don't have to. Lori is from the acrylics. Let me tell you, it is hard for me not to outline my acrylic work because I have done this for so many years, almost 30 years. Um, and that's just the way we did it. And it's really hard <laughs> to not do it. But no, you don't have to if you like the look of it. I I like the look of the black. And it depends. If I'm doing an Italian design, um, I outline with sapphire because that's how they do it over in Italy. Um, I got to go over there and study with the Italian artist for, was it 10 days, Bert? Seven, oh 10 days? Uh, when my kids were smaller and... Um, it was monkey see, monkey do, because I couldn't speak their language and they didn't speak mine. So, yeah. Is it possible to outline with a darker purple or green instead of black? Sure. You can, the question was, can you outline, and I just, that's on a curved surface, and that's really hard to do. Um, and I can't do it when I'm talking, I can tell you that. You can, yeah, you could do um, the dark green. And a lot of times I will put the dark green on the other side. And then I call that my practice run. And then I come back and still do black. But absolutely, uh, you do not have to do exactly what I'm doing. This is just a suggestion. I give you a starting point and then you can run with it. Okay, now, when I'm doing these little wing 
do you notice I turned around because I um, and then I'm gonna just pull in like those little feathery lines. Okay. Oh, and then I want to do some accent on the tail down here. And I'm just going to pull some short and long. I'm up on the tippy toes of that liner. I'm anchoring with my pinky to help keep me steady. Okay. And I did that one, did that one. Did I get it all, guys, except for the inside? I'm going to let that dry for just a second, and I'm going to go back to the plate so I don't stick my hand in that. So, like I said, this is on sale on the website. Usually um, I put them on sale, you know, when I'm going to do a thing like this for it. So hopefully... It might interest you. It's a downloadable PDF. And you can use it for your glass. Just adapt it. Um, you could do this um, with the designer's ginger. Um, just use the white. Well, actually, we have an ivory in the designers. So you could do it. It'll just be a thinner look, a more translucent look. Okay, that one is done. And I need to put the purple little dot and I need to add, see how this has the white dots at the end of those little feathers. Okay, so let's rinse that out. Yeah, a lot of times, I, you know, instead of signing with black, I will sign with um, like the dark green, oops. Yeah, I did that one. Okay. I want to do the purple on the top knot real quick before I forget. Okay. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Debbie Villa wants to know what the name of the pattern is. Okay. I'm going to pop it back up on the screen there, Debbie. It is called a touch of toll. So if you just in the search bar on the website, type in toll. It'll come up with anything that is toll related, or you can put touch of toll with the spaces in it, and it should pop up for you. Okay, I need a white dot in his eye, and I need the white on the tail. All right, CC102, Glacier White. And we don't need but just a half a dot. And I am going to go to my uh, dotting tool. This is the size three. There's three sizes in those dotting tools. Um, let me show you those. Since I just happen to have... Um, there we are. So there are dotting tools. There's three different sizes in there. Okay. If you're from the ceramic world, stylus is another name uh, for them. So I'm going to add, I'm going to get rid of that picture so you can see, guys. Okay. So I'm going to add just a little white dot, and I'm going to load for each dot because I want them all to be the same. Okay. So if you like this project... Has it helped you with your brush strokes? I think the more we see something, I will tend to watch things over and over if I'm trying to learn something new. Uh, because you're, you'll are you pick up something that maybe you didn't see the first time around. Do they like it, Bert? She certainly is. What is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, we're talking about how fast you are with your liner. Oh, how fast. Well, Lucy, I've done this for, like I said, over 30 years. So um, it's just like anything else. Um, the more you do it, uh, the quicker you're going to get. 
And remember what I said, fast is not always best. There's his little eye. Okay, fast is not always best and there's no prize for finishing first. Okay, all right, so I guess I need to sign my name on this one. Um, I'm gonna do it in black so that you can see it, the green you might not be able to see. I'm gonna go back to that um, 3600 number two liner. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Get that loaded nice, got a nice point. And um, I'm just gonna tuck it in by this leaf and hopefully I can anchor myself enough. So practice, and I can't talk when I'm doing my name, sorry. All right, there you go. It can be done. You're just up on the tippy tippy toes. Okay, on the very tip of that, okay? All right, now I'm gonna go back, whoops, wrong way. I do that every time. Like I said, I switch my cameras. Usually it's on the other end of the camera and I moved everything. All right. So now what I need to do is I need to show you, I put uh, two coats, normally an opaque under glaze is three, but because I'm going to put a glaze over this, a textural glaze, um, I only need two. There's no sense of waste in your product. Two does just fine for that particular uh, technique. If you joined in late, what I'm going to do is similar to this. You can see it's a text. This is called our lava stones. Um, I'm trying to think if I have, hold on. I might have a picture of them. I don't remember. No, I don't. Okay. So this is the ivory. I'm going to use the mauve. Okay. DL designer lava stone mauve 431. So Remember before I've talked about, so this is the 400 series. These are 600 series. The CCs are 100 series. If they have the same last two digits, so this is 31. If I had 131 out, they're made with the same pigment. It's just a different base that it's made into depending on what product it is, okay? All right, so make sure, and I did shake and stir this up really well earlier, but I'm going to shake it again. This is not a food safe surface. Okay, this is decorative only. What color are you going to do inside the pot? Just, <laughs> well, I'm only going to do clear on the inside of the pot because otherwise I would cover up my pretty design that I worked hard on. So I'm just going to clear glaze. Now, you do not clear glaze over this textural glaze. Okay. Do not glaze over this, okay, because it will look ugly as sin, okay? Always dampen your brush, blot out the moisture. And so this is thick. You can kind of see it's pretty thick and creamy. You will not see the crystals. Remember, I talked about what happens is the little crystals uh, pop open. It's almost like a clear glaze crystal in there. And when it pops open, you see the bisque that's underneath. So what I did was I put a dark color underneath it. This is a mauve color. Okay. So once again, let me show you the picture. I didn't have a fired one out here. But I'm putting a dark color underneath it so that the mauve will show up. And then I'm just going to clear glaze the rest of the areas. But do not get your clear glaze onto that lava stone. What Lori was wanting to know is whether you were going to outline the stuff inside. Oh, thanks for black, catching that, black Lori. Lines inside. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> You're right. I think I set that down while the outside was drying and did the plate, and then I forgot to go back. Thank you for mentioning that, because I probably do want to start that. Excuse me, before I do this glaze on the inside. Thank you. See, I get in a hurry and I forget. How are we doing on time, Bert? Oh, we're a little over an hour and a half. Uh oh. Well, I wanted you to see the whole thing. And Ben Bales. So. 
Den Bam. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. Uh, well, thanks for sticking with me. Um, let me know if you like this type of thing where you see the whole project from start to finish. Um, you know, I did put one coat of the ender glaze on there I, because there's just some things that we have to do or we'd be here forever. All right, Lori, thanks for reminding me of this. So you need to let me know what you'd like to see. You said you wanted uh, brush strokes. But is there um, a particular, maybe you're looking on the website and you see something and you'd like to really, what I'll try to do is kind of like I did tonight, I try to pull in other products so that um, you get different information each time and not just the same thing over and over. And everybody wants, likes the whole project. The whole project? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so would you like to try to do the project as I do it, or this is just, you like to see it, you can buy the packet and then you can go back and um, purchase if you want and do it later at your leisure. Um, no, they just want to watch them so they can get it in the drawing. <laughs> My husband, did you hear that? He said you just, he told me the other night, he goes, your giveaways have taken on a life of their own. And I said, well, you know, yeah, I kind of started this uh, just education. I wasn't able, you know, we're not able to go out and really teach. Um, although I did schedule a glass class across town. Um, and I'll have to look that up. But anyway, because of COVID and so many people are feeling uh, disconnected with everyone. So I thought this would allow us to do things together and You'll be able to see like the little bumps, uh, maybe. There you go. You can kind of see the gritty. Those are the little crystals. And I'm going to go like this up into the, the top of it that way. And I'm probably going to have to go to the Sumi brush because uh, this is going to be too big. And with me shaking... Now, if this was going to be something you put inside the house, um, I would not put the textural on the bottom because it will be rough and it could scratch um, your tables, okay, or glass, whatever you had it on. So I'm not going to put it on the bottom of this. I will clear glaze on the bottom when I clear glaze the rest of it. Now, this particular glaze can be fired at the 04 because you're probably wondering why I was putting this on here right now. It can be fired at an 04, which is what I'm going to take this to. Just because I'm not sure what this uh, piece of bisque was originally fired to. And I want to make sure that it is properly fired. Whoops. So this will be a three coat coverage. We're not going to wait and do this all on camera. I'll do it after it dries thoroughly. You can put two coats of a glaze, whether it's these textures or not, on, let it dry, and then come back and do your third coat. And with any glaze, if it's a three, if it is a three coat glaze, that's my recommendation. No more than two coats at a time. Let it dry and then come back and put your third coat on. I got to be careful I'm not sitting it down on the other side. So I'm using this brush and I'm trying to um, smooth out my strokes so that you don't see those. And this is heavy. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Burt, have you be thinking about spinning? Because we're almost done. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I just thought, you know, this would be something completely different by adding this textural glaze. Gives you another look at some of our other products. Um, but the numbering system, so this is a 400 number. 
um, you can match it to some of our other products if you're trying to match. Um, you can match it to glass. Uh, the glass colors are 300 series or 200. So everything in our line has a different prefix, but the same, if the, if the last two digits are the same, then they use the same uh, pigment or colorant. Okay, so you can see as it's drying, it's becoming chalky and matte versus wet, like that is there, but you can see all those little grainy, see all those there? So those are all those little crystals I was talking about. Okay, so those will pop open and expose that cranberry color that's underneath. Okay, um, I will, oh, like I did the edge of the plate earlier, um, I will come back and make sure that the edge of this has that color on there too. I'm going to put it all the way around. Um, and I will not bring the textural up here. I'll keep that all just where I can clear glaze it. And then that way it's um, easier for whoever gets it. They can feel free to put, you know, plant something in it. Okay. All right. So there's that. Again, we'll take another look at it. Again, this is Petro Molds. Wonderful mold maker. If you're in the ceramic industry, um, just contact them. They have an online uh, catalog, P-E-T-R-O Mold Company. And they're out of Waterford, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, Pennsylvania, right? I think that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like forgetting well, I haven't talked about some of these companies for a long time. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside and I will finish this later. And Mr. Burt is going to draw. So we gave away a brush earlier. And let me um, go back on. Hello. And I'm going to hide that one. Hi, guys. Okay. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, let's do uh, the poppy, watercolor poppy. DVD and you have to have a computer to play this because it has video and it also has PDFs. Okay, so if you do not have that capability and you want to pass this on, if you win, pass it on to someone else, um, then we can do a, a different thing. Okay, all right, Bert. We'll give away first. Do what? Robin says, There you are. Oh, as far as me being on camera, uh, it's so windy today. Don't look close. <laughs> Can those molds be used as slumping glass? You know what, Eva, you probably, but when I say mold, it is a plaster mold that you cast that piece from, okay? So you would have to know how to pour the slip in it to create this. If you know how to do that, then yes, you could put um, the pinholes in it so the air would escape. Uh, one of my teachers down in Tampa, Florida does do that with some of these shallow plates, but you have to know how to pour the ceramic. Okay. Oh, I do not look great. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> All right, Bert, who wins the watercolor poppy DVD combo? Nobody. Nobody? He's not going to let anybody <laughs> win. Not like he needs it. He's got enough stuff sitting around the house. <laughs> We're going to get him painting, right? <laughs> All right. Who's our winner? Uh, okay. I gave you a warning. He doesn't move as fast as I do. Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> yes. Come on. We're not going to wait for Christmas. Looks like... DVD goes to Telesa Key Long. Telesa Key, K E Y, Long. Mm -hmm. Telesa. Uh, Isabel says, Me, me, me. Miss Isabel, I'll send you one, honey, if you want it. <laughs> Not that one, though. I'll send you a different one. This is an older one that I made. I have improved in my video skills, hopefully, since then. Um, Okay, Telesa, I need you, um, because I don't believe you're in my system, I need you to private message me on Facebook with your address, phone number, email, if you're still on here. If not, I will message you, okay? Um, and so I can send you tracking. If you're going to order and you win, 
let me know so that I can hold your winnings and put it in with your order. A lot of people have done that in the past, okay? So just let me know. I haven't seen her pop on, have you? No? Nope. Okay, the next one is the plate. I put it underneath the camera like you can see it. <laughs> okay, so who is going to win this plate when it's done? I'll need about a week or so to get everything. Uh, I think I'm going to do the plate first. How many people we got on here? It depends on how many people still on. 46? Yeah, we'll do both. Okay, who's going to win the plate? Oh my goodness. Drum roll. Michael Nagy. How about you want you won the butterfly? <laughs> hey, where's Luann? She's not on here. Oh my. Yeah, she was earlier. Oh, she was earlier. Oh, that's right. She did ask a question. Lori Shearsman. Lori in Canada. You won the plate. Okay, girl. I need to know if you're ordering. Shipping to Canada is a little pricey, so let me know, okay, if you have something you're going to order. I know you've ordered uh, brushes and bottles and stuff, okay? <laughs> Lucy says, too funny. Okay, um, all right, so we did a brush earlier. We got the DVD. We did the plate. What else did I say I was going to do? Uh, soap dish. Well, I think I'll hold the soap dish. Let's do the planter since this is the ceramic crowd all right so we're gonna do the planter that i just painted tonight of course after i finish it okay like i said i need about a week i've got to fire this it's a 24-hour firing for uh, the bisque and then i'll have to apply the glaze and then fire it again so uh, with doing you know the day-to-day -day orders and stuff it'll take me a little while hello miss jackie jordan from on alaska texas all right who wins the flower pot? Bridget Manley. Bridget Manley? Yep. M-A-N-L-E-Y? That is correct. All right, Bridget, I'm not familiar with you, so you will definitely need to send me your information, private message, and your email, phone number, address, all of that, okay? That way I can get that to you. All right, so hopefully she's still on. Okay, <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, I think we're done. Um, Mr. Burt left the room for a minute, so I guess we're done. Bridget, okay, you are still on. Good. All right, so um, I'm not sure where you're located, but if you're going to order, be sure and let me know that you're going to order some things, and I'll hold it. Um, I've still got one thing I'm holding for somebody else, so uh, just let me know, okay? Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. And uh, we'll give away the soap dish next week since we did four items and a brush. So um, hopefully is November. I'm going to the States to visit my daughter. Miss Isabel says, I will come and visit you, Isabel, in Florida. I believe Robin told me. So I will definitely come and see you if you are coming over. If you get your vaccine and you're coming from Columbia, I will come and see you. That would be fun. We'll have to have a paint-a-thon, okay? All right, guys. Uh, no, Lori, I don't need your email or anything. I've still got everything. Just let me know if you're uh, going to order before I ship that, okay? So, and it, like I said, it'll be a week or so before I get everything completely done, okay? Thank you, Miss Ginger. Thanks for jumping on and staying with me, guys. And I will post these pictures whenever I'm done. And I will see you next Tuesday night for glass. And I don't know what I'm doing. I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. Okay. Take care. Good night. And everybody stay warm since it's getting cold everywhere. Okay.